He said, quote, the public agency of Canada was, and I'm using the language of your report, was not as prepared as it could have been. It, quote, did not address longstanding issues on how personal protective equipment and medical devices were managed in the national emergency strategic stockpile. They did not even have a sense of the inventory needed. Can you outline exactly what was there at the beginning of the pandemic? How bad were things there? So it's nice to be here, Evan. Um, the National Emergency Strategic Stockpile um, was not ready to respond to, to a pandemic. And what we found was that the Public Health Agency of Canada had not addressed longstanding issues that had been raised in a 2010 internal audit by the department um, in, in order to, to better prepare uh, the stockpile for a health emergency. What we saw was that um, their IT system had deficiencies and it was unable to track things like um, expiry dates in order to be able to take action when needed. And we saw that budget uh, constraints or limitations impacted their ability to do that assessment of how much a stock should be sort of baseline in the stockpile, as well as um, how to properly replenish it and restock it over the years leading up to the pandemic. It's very damning. Now, I just want people to understand, the head of the Public Agency of Canada is responsible for the National Emergency Strategic Stockpile. By the way, that's something that was supposed to, you know, was established in the 1950s, as you write. And that person who's in charge of that reports to the Minister of Health. So your report said these people, they ignored audits going back, you write, to 2010, 2013, warning of shortages. And you wrote, and I'm gonna quote, this calls into question the effectiveness of the agency's governance and oversight. Who is accountable for neglecting the emergency stockpile? There's gotta be a person who, screwed up here. So any internal audit is prepared by the chief audit executive and um, then management signs off on the findings and the recommendations and includes an action plan. So ultimately in any department or agency, the deputy minister is the one accountable. Uh, why we referenced governance is that internal audits always go to the departmental audit committee as well. And so uh, there they should be making sure that not only recommendations coming out of my audits, so external audits, but also internal audits are actioned in a timely way. While we saw some progress on some of the recommendations from that first 2010 audit, uh, the follow-up in 2013 and then our audit also found that many of the significant weaknesses still existed today. Okay, so I just want Canadians to who are watching understand this. We had this emergency stockpile that's literally supposed to be there to serve the provinces and territories in a time of emergency. It had been around for decades. There was audits in 2010, there were audits in 2013 internal audits. They knew that there was problems on inventory. They knew there was problems, uh, as you talked about, in terms of supply. They literally ignored those. So when the pandemic hit, they had ignored warnings, and that's why Canada was so far behind the curve. Is that fair to say? Well, when the pandemic hit, the, we saw that the emergency stockpile was unable to respond to the early requests from the provinces and territories. Uh, but we did see the government quickly react and turn into a very reactive mode to try and adjust. Uh, but, but you're right, the emergency stockpile was, was not prepared to, to address um, the surge in needs for a pandemic. But... Can you, why not though? I'm, I'm just like, I'm looking through your audit here and I don't see, didn't your audit get some baseline numbers of exactly how bad the stockpile was, what happened, why it was neglected? Isn't that the purpose of an audit to find out how it got so bad and why it was so badly prepared? So when we started to look at the data in the system and what had happened or not happened in the past leading up to the pandemic, uh, we weren't really able to get uh, the assurances at an audit level in order to be able to say how much was in the stockpile. Um, and so we turned our attention uh, once we had established that it wasn't ready and it wasn't where it needed to be and turned our attention to how did we deal with the issue at hand uh, as a country? And so how did the government pivot and react? Right. And, and we saw that them do that in, in, and continuously improve that over the pandemic. Right. Auditor General, I, I'm going to play a clip of what you said because I, I'm just trying to get at why you would make that decision. Here's what you said earlier. It's sort of a repeat of what you just said now, but I just want our, our audience to see this. Let's just play this clip.
The quality of the data was such that we couldn't rely on what um, the, the agency estimated was the stock on hand, um, and hence focused on, um, you know, when, when it's bad, uh, let's not focus on how bad is it and, and why did it get to the situation it got to, and focus on how to move forward. But you're the Auditor General. Isn't your job to focus on how bad it is? Isn't your job to focus on how it got so bad so it doesn't? Like, why focus on, oh, when they got it right, when lives were at stake? Why not focus on how it got so bad? Isn't, isn't that actually the job? So that is absolutely part of the job uh, to identify weaknesses and make recommendations on how to improve things. And, and you're thinking about a very traditional audit where we come in well after the fact and with hindsight, look back at what could have been done better. Uh, we're really in the middle of real time auditing a response to a pandemic as it continues to evolve. Um, and the focus was on being able to provide value to ensure that responses could continue to improve um, and, and securing personal protective equipment saves lives as well. So I think you have to look at the two sides of that coin. It's not just about lives um, that perhaps were lost because right. of the lack or lateness, but also lives that were saved. And so it's to find that right balance and, well, and focus on continuous improvement. No, no. Listen, I, I appreciate it. I'm sure the government is more than happy to focus on what went right. But like, again, I think a lot of Canadians are wondering, we're paying for this system. No, they're ignoring audits. Uh, they, they, the emergency stockpile is not there and there's no accountability and then we're kind of hoping that there's an audit so the Canadian public transparently can get some accountability. And, you know, I saw the government press conference and they're like, well, you know what, uh, this is great. We really ended up getting everything right. So again, I'm asking why make the decision to ignore what went wrong in the first place? So I don't think they got everything right. It was definitely not a perfect response, um, but it, it was a response that uh, ensured that the country could secure personal protective equipment. What I hope the government will draw from all of this is to recognize the value and the importance uh, that you need to address long-standing known issues and invest in things that people just don't see, whether that be an IT system that supports a program or restocking gloves and masks in a stockpile to be prepared prepared for a rainy day. Uh, they, they need to focus in on long-term thinking instead of that short-term focus. Um, and, and that, I think, will okay. be the best way to improve public service going forward. Uh, okay, so, so we still don't know how it got bad, what the numbers were on that. But, but Auditor General, let me, let me ask you another question. They spent $7 billion then scrambling to make up for their own failure. So we won't know if they overpaid, how much money could have been saved if we actually had been prepared, because there's no numbers in the audit on that. Do Canadians know if we got value for our money in the Wild West mad scramble to get PPE? How do we know if we got value for our money? So I highlight a few things. Um, at, at the beginning, um, it was a very reactive response. And that's when uh, the government realized that it needed to move to bulk procurement uh, in order to uh, take advantage of, uh, of large nationwide uh, purchasing power in order to secure personal protective equipment for the country. We saw the government develop a um, long-term supply and demand model, which better estimated the needs of the provinces and the territories. Uh, the public health agency outsourced warehousing to deal with the increased demand. And then uh, we saw a scarce resource allocation strategy developed. So when the purchases don't meet all of the needs, how can they be distributed to provinces and territories in an equitable way? So in a market like this, where demand is really high and the supply didn't keep up, it's, it's hard to find that right balance right. between what's right value for money. So we focused on quality and timeliness in our audit, uh, which we thought was a good measure for um, whether or not Canada was receiving what it should be receiving for the price it was paying. All right. Uh, Auditor General uh, Karen Hogan, always great to have you on the program. We always appreciate the work you and your teams do uh, to try to give us insight into what's going on. Thank you so much for joining us and spending time with us today.